Good afternoon. It's a nice day in Kentucky with 100% humidity. So I'm out here trying to solve problems. And today's problem I'm trying to figure out, trying to come up with a solution, is what would I do if my J72, that's that right there, part of it anyway, this is my J72 auto brake, if that was to fail. And I'm always thinking about it as I'm traveling because I guess it's the mechanic in me. I'm driving down the road. I'm thinking about all the stuff that's operating that could break at any moment. You know, so, you know, with fuel pumps and water pumps and alternators and, you know, and, and I've tried to, you know, I keep spare belts. I've got the air conditioner bypass kit in case the bearing goes out of the clutch. I can, I can get myself out of jam there. If my electric fuel pump goes out in the fuel tank, you know, because what a job that would be. Imagine if your fuel pump goes out on you. Uh, of course, remember, Keep in mind, this is a workhorse chassis, W24. It's got a, uh, about an 80-gallon fuel tank. And, of course, you know the fuel pumps are only going to go out when you, as soon as you have to fill up a tank uh, a fuel. So that would just be a, a nightmare process. So I thought about that ordeal, and I come up with a solution. I, I created an um, electric fuel pump bypass kit. And you'll see it here on my video channel somewhere. Just search, just search um, fuel pump. You'll see it. And so I've got, got a nice little kit. If my fuel pump fails on me within 15, 20 minutes, I can plumb this up and be back on the road. Uh, so I got that solved. But there's one thing I haven't solved is what happens if my J72 quits? And uh, first of all, I guess I'll tell a little bit how it works. Because it, to start off with, that is our hydraulic pump. And what the, our J72 does, that is our parking brake. And that is our only parking brake we have because the transmission, it's Allison transmission, but it does not have a parking palm. So let me crawl under the RV and I'll show you a quick Galloway cat. All right, got my exercise mat ready. Okay, it's going to here. Okay, right there it is. So that's your J72 brake mechanism. And this part here is, is stationary. It's bolted to the back of the transmission. The drive shaft goes through it. There's some splines in there, that, and there's these big spinning discs, kind of like, like a clutch would be uh, on, a, on a car. Except the way this operates, there's a big spring in here, and by default, the spring is always applied. It's got that brake disc compressed, which is not going to allow this drive shaft to rotate, which is not going to allow the RV to move. Sorry about that, got a phone call. Anyway, but anyway, that's going to stay compressed. It's not going to allow the drive shaft to move. You're not going anywhere. Uh, of course, I believe the reason they did not put a parking pole in this transmission is the fact this is a 24,000 pound chassis. And they, I'm assuming they felt that the parking pole wouldn't be enough to hold this much weight back on a hill. So, the way this operates, because you see you've got your hydraulic line here, and we've got that pump up front. When you start up the vehicle and you put it in gear, the pump engages, it applies 12 to 1500 PSI of hydraulic fluid and it overrides the spring pressure, releases the drive shaft, and you can drive away. But there's several things that have to work properly for all this to operate. And if anything fails, well, you're not going anywhere. You're, you're stuck until you get it fixed. And I got to thinking, you know, what if that happens to me? I'm on the road out in the middle of nowhere, and I go put it in gear and I can't drive away. Is there anything I can do to get me out of this jam? Besides calling a tow truck and paying a big tow bill and waiting for parts and all that stuff. So I think I may have come up with a solution. So anyway, th so this is part you know, of our situation. We've got hydraulic lines. You know, you could have a hydraulic line a spring a leak. That would leave you stranded. Whoop, let me get back upstairs here. What else could happen? Um, well, you've got your uh, relay. So this is the relay to the, to the auto brake. That could fail. Of course, if it fails and you troubleshoot it and you know that's what the problem is, you could just swap it with the ABS relay. They're the same part number. So keep that in mind. That's, a, that's a, something to check. Uh, but also, we've got our pump. So your pump could fail. Uh, you've also got Underneath the pump, you can't see it, but if you haven't done the upgrade, I've done this upgrade here uh, to the, the Brazzles Ultra Stop, so I've eliminated it. But uh, if you haven't done the upgrade, you'll have a little computer box underneath here. 
that's put on by workhorse. And that's monitoring all, monitoring all these inputs and stuff. So if that computer was to fail, the same thing could happen. could leave you stranded. Uh, several different things. So I've got to thinking, how could I get myself out of a pickle? And so I, th I think I've come up with a solution. And um, let me show that to you. Oh, oh yeah, before I do that, I was going to do something else first. Let me show you here. I was going to show you what it would be like. Imagine, see, I, here's the, this is the relay. I've already un unplugged it. So without this relay, this pump is not going to energize, and that's not going to give you uh, 1,500 PSI so you can drive away. So I'll show you what that's like. Okay, in the RV. Okay. You see it all breaks on. Of course, the relay is pulled, so imagine you had a bad relay or a bad pump. You go to drive away, you put it in reverse, step on the gas, and nothing happens. You know, you may freak the, you may think the transmission is out or something, but, but that brake is holding it and you put it in drive. You can see we're just sitting still, not going nowhere. So that sure would make for a bad day. So now we've got to figure out a way. If that was to happen, how can we get on down the road? Okay, well here's my pieces parts I came up with. I think this is, will work just fine for me. Because remember I was talking about we need 1500 PSI to override the, um, the brake mechanism. And with this 10 ton portable pump, that gives me 3,000 PSI. So that's more than enough. Of course, I need to know how much PSI I'm putting in there. I mean, there, I could use, because I did that, uh, that um, what was it called, ultra stop upgrade, and now I do have that switch. I could use a, a volt ohm meter and just note when that switch, uh, uh, was it open or close, whichever way it goes, um, whenever that switch is activated, then I know I've got my, I've met my, pressure point which is probably 1200 psi thereabouts but i'm gonna put with, well, i'm gonna put a gauge on here uh so in this gauge i already had this gauge it's very nice all brass look at there made in america so um i got that i got this on amazon it's like 42 bucks free shipping i don't know how they do that and you know it's just one quarter inch pipe thread so i got me some nipples got a couple t's and the handiest thing is this uh, quick disconnect. So what I'm about to do, I'm going to plumb this up. I'm going to put me a put me a T on here, my, my nipples. I'll have my gauge on it. And then I'm going to have this attached to the RV. So all I have to do is just plug up my quick connect, give it a few pumps, watch my gauge when I get 1500 psi. I'll know the brake is released. And I'll unplug, you know, and it's got this check valve in there so, so the pressure won't bleed off. And uh, I think that'll work pretty well for no more than uh, 75 bucks or so. So let's get to plumbing this together and uh, we'll give it a test run and see if this will actually work. All right, I'm just getting started. I've done hit an issue, but a minor issue. And taking my line loose, I noticed the fluid that came out of this is clear. It's got clear fluid in it. So I suspect it may not be compatible with what we have in our system already, which is dextron mercron. So I've taken the line off and I've drained it out, but I'm going to get my air compressor and, and blow out any remaining fluid. Get it completely cleaned out, get the hose cleaned out, and then I'll fill it up with the, with the same fluid that's, that's in there. So we don't want to be mixing fluids, that's for sure. So anyway, it's a minor thing, so if you... If you attempt this project, that's something oh, you want. Here's to a do. tip: you know, when you're putting on your Teflon tape on your fitting, be sure to come back one thread, so you don't risk getting any Teflon tape into your hydraulic system. So, don't want to. Both gauge is installed. My T fittings put in. Got the fluid changed over. Uh, here's a tip, though, because after I put the fluid in there, it, you know, of course, you add the fluid through this little cap. And I snugged it back up, and that thing wouldn't take prime, wouldn't take prime, but then all I had to do is loosen this cap, let it get some air, and it primed up real quick. Um, and I'll show you now. You just close this valve. Of course, that center's 1500 PSI. There we go. There we go. Just a couple of strokes. We got 1500 PSI. So that should release my brake and enable me to drive away. 
So that is the plan. Let's just see. If okay, now it's plumbing time. Let me see. I was going to, one thing I was going to point out. I got these tees on Amazon, but I, one of them cracked on me when I went to tighten it up. It split, was leaking. So I didn't like that idea, and I sure don't want one to, to split on the RV. So I dug them up my pile of fittings and found this big heavy duty tee. So that won't be splitting on me. So I'll use this on the RV side. And get my nipples here and my little check, quick connect check valve. And I just got to decide the best way to plumb this up somehow or another in this direction. So I'm gonna get this apart, do a dry run, and uh, see. Okay, how it and works. I'm gonna let you see if you can't hear the pump when it pumps up. All right, so it just pumped up to 1500 psi, and, and it's released because now I can I can move. All right, rolling forward and back. So we do work. All right. And I'll put it up here, and now I'm going to uh, pull the wheel. Okay, you see I pulled out the wheel lane, and now uh, let me try to drive away. Okay, put it in park. Can't go nowhere. I'm stuck. I'm stranded. Oh no, I'm stranded. What am I going to do? Well, let's see if my contraption will work. Put it back in park. Okay, let me take up my little hand pump set up here. There's the hose, and I'm sitting here and imagine I'm stuck. I can't drive away. All I gotta do is loosen up this one fitting here. And then take this one out. Try to do this one-handed. Now there's a fitting I had to go buy. I had to go buy this right here to get me from, um, I think it's called number four hydraulic fitting to, um, it's a quarter inch uh, national pipe thread. And so just put that, screw that in in its place. And I'll put my quick connect on there. Get it tightened up here. Give me a wrench. So I'm going to have to get two hands okay. on that. You see I got my fitting put in. And I've connected my quick connect hose. Quick connect hose. And now I got my pump right here. I'm going to try to do this one handed. Without, and you can see my gauge. A couple of squirts because I'm looking for about 1500 psi. It's not as efficient doing this yeah, one that's hand. Yeah, more efficient using two hands, but you can see now I've got a little over 1500 psi. I'm pumped in there. Um, now now that's pumped in there because now I got an advantage because I've got this upgrade. I have a check valve here. So the fluid goes in past this one way check valve and it goes out this line down to the brake mechanism on the transmission. And because I have this check valve, I can now relieve the pressure. I've got this little knob here, turn that knob, and my pressure will drop. Okay? So now my pressure has dropped. I can now oops, the phone almost. I can now disconnect my line. Now I did a test, you know, just to see if it worked and it will not. If you try to plumb in like on this side past the check valve, you'll have so much pressure on this back side you can't get this to release. So you have to have some sort of check valve mechanism or an inline valve. So once you pump up the pressure, you can seal it off and then get your disconnect released. I'll um, show you what I'm talking about a little bit later on that. Uh, okay, so let me get this out of the way. Okay, now it's pumped up. Now, and you can see the motor is still disconnected, as if I've had a motor failure. I'm pumped up. And now I'll see if I could drive away. I've got the wheel scotched. Okay. Now if I did this correctly, I could start it up and, and back it up. Back it up. Okay, put it in reverse. Let's see if we can move. Yep, see it does work. So I have got the auto brake released even though my motor is not working at all. 
so this will get me off a pickle. Of course, I hope I never need it, but it is comforting to know I've made this for, I don't know, 75 bucks or something like that. So it's cheap insurance, so I like that. Um, but now, for those of you who um, don't have um, this upgrade install, you have to do something a little bit differently. I'll go inside on the computer and show you that. Okay, for those of you who may not have the ultra stop installed, you'll need a way to hold back the pressure, and so you can also uh, relieve the um, port of power. And this is the item you need. This will hold back 2,000 psi. Right there it is. So when I drew a little schematic here, it's kind of give it give you an ideal. So there's the port of power. You have your gauge on there. You'll see what your psi is. You have a little quick connect, and you'll have that valve. So once you pump it up to about 1500 PSI, crank down your valve, bleed off the pressure, disconnect it, and your auto brake will be released. So that's a, a way you can get around that if you don't have the ultra stop installed. Well, I've got everything all put back together now. Everything's plugged back up like it's supposed to be. I'll, I'll test it again, make sure it works. But, but here's my little kit now. So I'll just pack this away in the RV along with this little adapter. I'll, I'll probably put this in a strong little Ziploc bag and wire tie it onto the handle here or tape it on there so it don't get lost. But, I mean, it, it adds 14 pounds to the RV, but it'll be a cheap insurance policy if you ever need it. And let's start it up, make sure it does work. Galloway nine toes. There oh, we go. You would call him nine toes. Something happened to one toe, don't know what, so that's his name. And you can, I think you can hear that noise. I'll put it see here if you can hear it again. Close this up. You can hear the hydraulic pump kick on. That's that pump building up 1500 PSI to release the brake. And let's show you here. And you can see I can drive away. So everything is back working the way it's supposed to. All right. And I'll, sh come and I'll show you some more tips that I know about to think about. You know, I guess I need to, as a warning too, big major warning, uh, if you go to do this, to jack this up, of course I was on a nice level spot here. Uh, you know, I was able to scotch the wheels and I knew the RV wasn't going anywhere. But if you was on the road, you know, and you had to do this, you know, you don't want to uh, apply that pump and have the RV drop, roll away from you. So you need to scotch the wheels. Of course, ideally, most RVs of this size are going to have the hydraulic jack. So drop all your jacks down, uh, and that will ensure your RV won't go anywhere. But I was also thinking about something else. Say, for instance, we blew a line. So say, for instance, you know, this, this line blew. Well, that, with that check valve mechanism, because you still need a, a jack, check valve, but sometimes you, you wouldn't have to have a jet valve. You could just leave the pump mechanism attached to it because it's got that little knob on the side to relieve pressure. The only problem is you'd have to strap it up somewhere. You know, that would be a real pain, but you'd have to carefully keep it attached and strap it up. But having a check valve or a shutoff valve is ideal. But even if you blew this line, you could take the other line from up front, put it in here, put on your check valve, pump it up, you know, and then un disconnect it and you'd be good. You know, just somehow, some way, we gotta get 1500 PSI back in this drum so you can drive away. Of course, if you're doing that, realize if you're pumping that thing up and you're under here and you don't have jacks down, don't have wheels scotched, you're about to get run over. So, this is only for emergency situations, just worst case scenario, and you gotta get, get out of Dodge and get somewhere else where you can actually get the parts and get it fixed. Because uh, cause it could, this could leave you stranded on an interstate, a gas station, just anywhere. It just depends on where, when it decides to fail. And these RVs are getting older every day. You never know. I don't know how common they are to fail, but, you know, you just never know. It depends on how lucky you are. I thought right. I'd bring this up while I'm in, in here talking about this brake mechanism. For those of you who may have already upgraded to this um, Ultra Stop, I noticed with mine, because I was one of the early adopters, I guess, one of the first ones that came out, and it may have been corrected since then. You may notice this gob of mess of silicone on my wires on the back side. I did it on purpose 
because at some point in time I was rearranging my wires and I unplugged this and I noticed I had some green corrosion down there and I thought well how can that be I've got this uh, silicone seal here rubber seal, and but yet I had green corrosion I got to looking around and I noticed there was no seals on the back side so any moisture and stuff could get in there and then sometimes with these RVs you get a, a heavy downpour sometimes the water can come through that gap and get in here because I've had me a weather seal and that's helped to stop that uh, so I put that uh, some silicone sealant on there to keep any moisture out I did it on my, all my connections because in comparison where we got like down here here's a factory connector and you can see right there you see on the back side a little blue that's a little silicone uh, o-ring type seal to keep the moisture out and these didn't have that but I talked to Alan I think he's going to look into that with maybe his uh, newer versions get that updated but I thought I would point that out if you have any of these you might want to put your, put your dab of silicone on the back side and that way eliminate any, any corrosion issues in the future especially if you're around the ocean that could probably be a uh, cause problems maybe. Alright, that's that.